I swear Gaston is one of Disney's best villains. How's it going, fellas in the files? This is Dominic from Film Overload, a channel where we talk about movies, pop culture, and everything in between. Today I have another Disney retro review, and the last one we did was The Little Mermaid, and today I will continue the 90s trend and review the 1991 animated classic, Beauty and the Beast. Now I didn't know this movie got nominated for Best Picture. I knew that it got nominated for Animated Feature, but I did not know that it got nominated for Best Picture also. And the Academy is pretty sparse when it comes to nominating animated films for Best Picture, but I can totally see why it did. A movie that really just captivated the audience at the time and continues to captivate audiences all these years later, it is just one of those Disney films from the 90s that has really stood the test of time. Again, while watching this film, it really struck me, like The Little Mermaid in my previous review, just how different the company was back in the 90s compared to now. Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast really just showcased just how much Disney really put into the stories and the stories that they were trying to tell to captivate these audiences, and they just really cared about the product that they were releasing to the public, and Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid was just those kinds of movies. The story follows a character named Belle who lives with her father in this small village, and she is kind of like the, oh, woe is me kind of character. She feels kind of empty, and she just feels like she is a complete oddball, so to speak, in this town. Like, she doesn't belong, she doesn't fit there, and I think we can all relate to some degree about maybe not fitting in our current situations. So Belle is a very attractive Disney princess to a lot of people because of her situation and how she feels about it. And she goes on this crazy adventure and she meets, obviously, the Beast later on in the film and all the other characters. And once again, it's just Disney really digging into those creative roots that they once had and really just telling a story that is just so universal and so comforting in a way. Um, they just really knew how to tell these stories and I really wish that they would go back to telling stories like this because once again movies like this just really captivate audiences and again continue to captivate audiences all these years later. As far as writing goes I really don't have any complaints. The writing is really really solid Again, it's just 90s Disney. They just knew how to write these stories and create so many great characters that will be remembered for the rest of time. They really just cared about telling a story through the eyes of these characters, and this movie has no shortage of iconic characters. Speaking of characters, let's talk about them, starting with Belle. I forgot totally about Belle. S sort of. Um... I haven't seen this movie in a long time, and I knew Belle was the main character, obviously, but as a kid, you don't really know the intricacies of these characters, and then you grow up and you watch these movies again, and you really start to see those really deeper character arcs with these characters, and so far, I think Belle really has one of those more interesting character arcs. Again, like I mentioned, uh, she is this oh, woe is me kind of character. Her situation, she just absolutely hates. She feels left out. She feels like she doesn't belong in this town. And once again, it's a very relatable character arc, which makes Belle herself very, very attractive to a lot of people. And besides being just a fun-loving and easygoing character, she really just has a lot of charm and charisma, and you can really see the compassion in this character, which again, makes her really attractive to a lot of people, myself included. Okay, moving on to The Beast, which I think has another really interesting character arc along with Belle. You really feel bad, actually, for this character, just like Belle did in the movie. A young prince who was cursed to become a beast by this beautiful woman who was disguised as an old and decrepit woman who the prince had no compassion towards. And you really feel for this character, a prince who has just been through it all him hiding from society because of the way he looks, and you can just really feel 
for this character. And, you know, through his interactions with Belle and the other characters living with him in the castle, you really get to know him on a more deeper level underneath all that fur. This character is a perfect complement to Belle. And obviously, because of that, they fall in love in the movie. And just the chemistry between these two characters was really captivating. And I can really see why this movie has stood such a test of time. These two characters' chemistry really, really work for me and a lot of other people. I don't know why, it, it just does. But once again, this was back when Disney really cared about telling these stories to the masses with all these great and iconic characters. So really... The two main characters' chemistry in this movie is what really drives this movie home. And I know I said this in the intro, but I have to say it again. Gaston, in my honest opinion, has to be one of the best Disney villains they've created. There's just something about this guy that is charming, but at the same time, so devious. And there's just something about this guy's character that just really, really worked well with me a guy who just basically wants to marry his crush and he'll do anything to get her even though she has zero interest in this guy at all like she has absolutely no interest in him but he tries and tries and tries again to win her heart and just through the goofiness of this character but also the charm of this character you really have a nice balance between the two main characters and the so-called antagonist which is Gaston in this movie and even the supporting characters in this movie are just so charming I mean you have Cogsworth you have Lumiere you have Mrs. Potts you have Chip you have just all these great characters that support the two main characters and they just really complement the two main characters as well and really make this movie the total package. There are so many great characters in this movie and again, that's what 90s Disney was all about. It was telling these stories through the eyes of such charming and charismatic characters and Beauty and the Beast has so many great characters characters and you already know my take on the 90s animation style i just absolutely love the hand-drawn animation in all of these 90s disney movies there's just something so comforting and just so great about the hand-drawn animation i just love the style and again because of how advanced computer technology has become with animation we're never going to see hand-drawn again which is just tragic because i just think it's such a gorgeous look for animation and really gave these movies their signature look as far as music goes music in this movie is just so pivotal there's just so many great songs once again in this movie from the opening piece to the Gaston song in the Bar and Lodge, to the Beauty and the Beast song that Mrs. Potts sings. There's just so much great music in this movie, which again was just another signature trait of 90s Disney. Overall, Beauty and the Beast is just another classic Disney movie from the 90s, a movie that was a great follow-up to the 1989 classic Little Mermaid and again really kicked off the renaissance for Disney in the 90s. I really enjoyed this rewatch. Is it as good as Little Mermaid? I think Little Mermaid is a little better but Beauty and the Beast is just another 90s staple in Disney's catalog. So there it is. There is another Disney retro review. And if you want more Disney retro reviews and more content like this, be sure to smash that like button. Also hit the subscribe button while you're at it. And turn on the post notifications so that you guys can get notified every single time I post a video. You can follow me on Letterboxd, which is right here. I post all my movie reviews on Letterboxd as it helps me keep track of movies that I have watched, movies that I haven't watched, and movies that I will watch. And I think you guys would benefit greatly from this app and this website if you are indeed lovers of cinema like myself. As always, guys, happy movie watching. Take care.